Hi guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today I have a early impression video, first impression. Well, not a first impression, it's an early impression um, because I have worn this fragrance once before I wore it to bed. So this is the full time, my first time giving it a full wear. Um, but um, I have smelled it before, so it's not a true first impression. Uh, this is a fragrance from the house of Dior, and it's called Ombre Nuit. Now, Ombre Nuit uh, is a fragrance that came out in 2009, um, 13 years ago. Uh, but I'm not familiar with this fragrance until just recently, thanks to my um, brother from another mother across the pond, uh, Rich Mitch. Thank you for sending me these samples. I'm so glad that they uh, turned up after months of waiting. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm able to kind of, I'm working my way, excuse me, through some of the samples. As you can see, yesterday I did a first impression on a, a Rige Ladore fragrance. Uh, that I really, really enjoyed called War and Peace. And today, it's another first impression, Ombre Nui. Now, I will tell you just from the very get-go that I have a love-hate relationship with this fragrance right off of the bat, instantly. Uh, I have a love-hate relationship because, um, well, two things. Number one is that you know I don't like sweet fragrances, okay? there is this synthetic sweetness that my nose just hones in on in the opening and I can't get it out of my head. It's there. Um, I just did a fresh spray 10 minutes ago and I still get the remnants of that, whatever the synthetic molecule that Demashi used to create that, you know, sparkly opening. It's supposed to be like bergamot uh, with pink pepper and Turkish rose. Um, I don't like that material. It smells almost like a version of a woody amber to my nose. And what's weird is, is no one else mentions it. Mentions it. Now, real quick, because you guys know I'm big into versions and, you know, what's what, if it's reformulated, stuff like that. Rich Mitch informed me that this sample that he sent to me, which as you can see, I've given it quite a few wears, um... This, this sample that he sent me is from, this is the new bottle, by the way. That's how the new caps of the uh, bottles uh, look like. This is Feb Delicious, which I hate. Um, I don't know why I own Feb. It's totally everything that I don't like in a perfume. Uh, but I wanted to show you the new bottle cap that looks like that with the CD combined. The old bottle cap looked like that with the CD spread apart. And... Uh, Rich Mitch told me that this sample came from the old, you know, pre-reformulated. They reformulated the whole line basically in 2017. <laughs> um, excuse me. So this version came from the old, the more sought after uh, bottle, let's say. And um, so the opening has that sweetness that my nose hones in on and I just can't get it out of my head. Okay, that's the first part of it. It almost smells... Um, and I know this sounds strange, but I get the same like woody amber smell that I get in Spice Bomb Extreme in the opening. For some reason, no one else talks about it, but um, the opening instant put me off. It's sweet. It's, um, I, I can't take that sweetness. I'm, I'm past that. But then it changes. It does something different as the hours go by. So this is a... Uh, what time is it? It's one o'clock. So this is a four hour dry down. And I'm really enjoying it because it has a couple facets that I really like. Number one, it has Turkish rose. Now, let me take you through the, the journey of the perfume on my skin. So you first spray, you get that woody amber feel that I absolutely despise. I don't know how no one else gets it. Uh, I don't know why only I am talking about that. Um, you know, maybe maybe I'm just super sensitive to the ultra sweet notes. But once it dries and once it settles is where I enjoy it. And the, the Turkish rose in the mid for me is where things start to really get interesting. I don't get rose from the opening. I heard other reviewers, I watched some other reviewers say, instantly you spray, you get a beautiful rose. I don't get that. The rose doesn't come out till later for me. Um, 
15, 20, maybe even 30 minutes in, once it does come out, it starts to change and it start and I start to really enjoy it because Turkish Rose has this um, powdery, almost like a honeyed, like waxiness. Um, and when, when, when you get that, so it's, so if you compared, let's say Turkish Rose to Bulgarian Rose, which Bulgarian Rose makes up about, I think something like 70% of the market. Uh, it's, it's the, it's the main one people think about. That's that jammy rose that, you know, you, 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 you get in the, when a rose is like really jammy, odds are it's Bulgarian rose. Um, so here you don't get that jamminess of the rose, which I like. Um, it's also, it's not as fresh as a Bulgarian rose can sometimes come across or Damask rose can sometimes come across as very fresh. This one comes across as heavier, waxy, honey, um, and you almost get this, this honey waxiness, um, you know, with a little bit of green touches to the rose, makes it feel like you're smelling a rose in the actual soil, like you can smell the entire atmosphere around the rose. You can smell the soil that it's growing in, and I really enjoy that part of this fragrance. Um, I like that honey waxy smell, which is probably also being helped along by the second mystery of this fragrance, which is in the fragrance community, uh, there is a little bit of a war going on between the word ombre and ombre nuit. Half of the people think that it's amber, half of the people think that it's amber gris, okay? And um, I think that um, Francois de Machy did a little bit of one of his veteran moves because he has been in the industry for a long time and he does know some tricks. Even though I, you know, give him a little bit of a bad rap, um, I, left a, I left a comment on one of my favorite YouTuber, AC from the channel Smells Good did a video where um, he called Francois de Machy a genius recently. And I wrote that maybe he's more of a mad scientist kind of thing. Um, and so I know I we give Francois de Machy a hard time, but he has been in the industry for decades. He knows some tricks of the trade. And I think what he did here is actually um, somewhat smart somewhat savvy and somewhat a little conniving because what he did is you know i think he knew that the real perfume heads would pick up on this and they would say wait a minute that's not an amber fragrance that's an amber gris fragrance or no it's not an amber gris it's an amber fragrance and so what he did is i think he used amber but he also used amber gris but he never went all the way with either, right? So um, if you got up on your high horse and, and pounded the table and said, no, you idiot, this is an amber gris fragrance, you'd be right. I think it is a little bit of an amber gris fragrance. I mostly get, um, I mostly, the first time I wore this to bed, I mostly got amber gris. I didn't pick up on that amber signature. Today, giving it a full wear, I'm picking up more on the amber portion of it. Um, almost like there's a little bit of labdanum underneath. Like there's like there's a warmth of amber and labdanum or something like that. Benzoin, you know. And he has used, um, for example, this is Santal Noir. Um, this is a decant of Santal Noir that I got. Santal Noir is also a rose uh, ambrette you know, like this ambery ambrette um, with um, sandalwood. And, you know, he also made a year after this, um, Ombre Nuit came out in 2009. In 2010, they released Mitza. And uh, Mitza is even more into the amber fragrance and, you know, more into the labdanum, you know, heavy honeyed type um fragrance with rose and stuff like that and frankincense and cinnamon. Cinnamon is another note that I pick up here that's not listed. Uh, there's definitely some sort of spiciness, some sort of cinnamoniness. 
Uh, there's also a patchouli, but it's not, don't think of like psychedelic or, you know, Moods Walmo or anything like that. It's not that kind of patchouli. It's not there to um, say this is a patchouli. It's there to add, you know, some depth, some layers to the fragrance, some heft, if you will. And it does that well. The patchouli is used very well. The rose is used very well. Um, the woody base of Gaiac wood and cedar, which maybe that's where I'm picking up some of these synthetic molecules. I, I don't know. But even now, I sprayed it about 15, 20 minutes ago before I did this video. Um, let's see, we're 10 minutes in. So I sprayed it about 20 minutes ago. And I'm still picking up this very synthetic, very... Like it doesn't smell like it should be a privé. It, it, it smells like, um, it's, it's, it's nice, but it, it doesn't smell like this is a high class fragrance right now. But if you give it half an hour, um, give it 45 minutes, an hour to let it settle. And I really enjoy what it turns into. Um, I love the rose, amber, gris, amber combo. And the reason that there is that war going on is there are some ambery aspects, absolutely. Um, but there's also that sparkliness that you get from ambergris. Um, and I have some experience with real ambergris because I've been talking about this for a long time now. This is Ombre Supreme. This came out last year. This is the best example of an ambergris fragrance I've ever smelled, ever. Um, it is... Um, really enjoyable. Uh, one of my subscribers was talking about the difference between this and Atlantic Ambergris by Aris Ladori. There are some real proper Ambergris fragrances. Uh, and Ombre Supreme is probably the best example I've ever smelled. Maybe there's better examples, but for me, this is the mountaintop as far as real Ambergris goes. Um, and in Ombre Nui, you know, you do get a little bit of that. It doesn't go all the way, though. It's That's why I say it's a little bit of a conniving trick from Francois de Machy because sometimes it's not about... Um, sometimes perfumery is more about what you make people think that they're smelling rather than what they're actually smelling, if that makes sense. Uh, and I think he kind of planted the seed in, in people's brains here that uh, Ombre Nui is an ambergris fragrance or it's an amber fragrance and then you start thinking you're smelling that and and maybe the the people who are more beginners um you know i don't want to make it seem like i am like some sort of authority on perfume because i'm not but uh, maybe if you haven't smelled as many fragrances you might smell this and you might not realize that you know you're kind of hat being played a little bit of a trick on and you might smell something and make your mind up and just go and commit and say, no, this is an amber fragrance, and then you're getting into YouTube battles with people, and, and that's that's what ends up happening. I think it's both, and I think it's a little bit of a daft move on the part of Demache to, um, to give us a little bit of facets of both amber and amber gris. Now, the downside, uh, this is expensive, and for me, where I'm at, if I smelled this 10 years ago, this is a buy. This would be a certain buy. I would be talking about it. I would be, I would be wearing it. I would be, you know, talking about how great it is. For Ramsey today in 2022, um, this probably is a pass. Just because of that sweetness. That... That spicy woodiness, that synthetic spicy woodiness that takes a while to go away, I don't think it's worth the money. I, I really don't. Um, I think there are better perfumes if you're going to spend this kind of dough, especially nowadays. Maybe in 2009, that wasn't the case. Um, but for me, Ombre Nui is, I'm a little bit on the fence. Um, I'm not sure. I guess that's why I say... I'm of two minds when I when it comes to this perfume because I like it, but I also really don't like it. Part of me really likes it and part of me really doesn't like it. And maybe I'm just still at the point where I haven't made my mind up. Um, but unless a bottle literally fell in my lap, 
I would probably say this is not one that I would um, that I would hunt down. That being said, as you can tell from my the way I'm talking about it, um, the the review, the the conversation, where it's going. Um, there are redeeming qualities to this. It, it is a fragrance that is worth getting your nose on and sampling it. And I never would have if it wasn't for Rich Mitch. And so, um, thank you again, my friend. Uh, it's much appreciated. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that, uh, I think you should put on your to sniff list for sure. If you've never smelled Ombre Nui, apparently I'm like the last one on earth that's never smelled this. Everyone I talk to has smelled it. Um, and so I'm kind of sitting here going, do I want to hunt down a vintage bottle, marked up prices, all that stuff? Is the reformulation even worse? Or, or can you just go buy a new bot? You know, I don't know any of that. So for me, I'll probably just stick it on the back burner and maybe I'll revisit it, maybe I won't, but at least I can say I smelled it, enjoyed it. I know I can, I store it in the old scent memory up there, and we can move on to the next one. So, I uh, just wanted to do a quick first impression of Ombre Nui, and remind everyone that I am currently working on the top 100 list. As soon as we hit 1,000 subscribers, that video will drop. I sent a, um, I sent a rough draft to a couple people that I trust, and so um, just know it is in the work. So I've said this before, you don't have to comment, like, and subscribe. I'm not gonna do the YouTube um, shtick of comment, like, and subscribe down below and make sure you have notifications turned on. That's not my thing. Um, but a subscription helps because once we get to that thousand mark, I can knock out this uh, top 100 and be done with it because it's literally, it's. Uh, I'm agonizing over the spots. I changed like two things today. Moved one down one, one up one, and I'll probably move them right back tomorrow. Um, but uh, anyways, if you have experience with Ombre Nui, which I'm sure a lot of you guys do, uh, let me know in the comments down below. And, um, you know, let me know what you think of the Privé line. Uh, the original ones like this from early 2009, 2010, they were kind of the, the cream of the crop. 2018, 19, 20, 21, uh, things started to really get touchy there. Um, but uh, I'm Brayden Wee. Let me know if you have experience with it, thoughts, if you agree with me, disagree with me. Uh, I love seeing your faces in the comments. So we'll keep this video short. 17, 18 minutes for me is like a, is like a, a, is like a record. Um, so thanks for watching as always. Cheers, and I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye-bye.